this video is for a special friend of ours and for any other moms, dads, and other people out there that use the Infinity feeding pump. Um, we keep our two feeding bags downstairs in the kitchen with everything else. And um, we have the formula up here um, and we have some other stuff that she takes for her nutrition, she being our daughter. Um, we have some extra bottles to hold the formula and down on this level we have the stuff we access most often throughout the day, like little containers to measure the formula, um, plates and other things, and then a container for the um, funnel and the scale. But first I'll talk about the bag. So we use the Interolite Infi Infinity Pump and I think this is the name of the company, M-O-O-G, I'm not exactly sure how that's pronounced. Um, with our program, we change the bag once a day. We have found that this system works a lot easier than the two feeding machine that our daughter had in the hospital, which was the kangaroo pump. Um, we have nothing against it, we just like this one better for the amount of milk that our daughter needs. So what we did was we hung a command hook on the inside of a cabinet. Um, right near the sink. Hold it like this and make sure that there is a little bit of space under, under there otherwise this is going to fill up real quickly and then overflow and spill. So you could probably see it filling there. And I believe the um, machine manual says to really make it as airtight as possible. Um, we're not too particular about that. I just kind of squeeze it a little bit. But be careful though that you don't squeeze the milk out, otherwise it'll make a mess again. And then um, really push down when you have a new bag like this because sometimes it won't completely close. Like, see how that's uneven there? So that's not completely closed. So it's going to push again. And there you go. So we hang this here. One of the things we've learned that has really expedited um, the feeding because this has to be changed every four hours is how to prime the bag every time you fill it. So every time you fill it, if it's not a new bag, we end up rinsing and we fill it with some water and then flush the line through and then put some milk in. Um, but what we do to prime it is we take this uh, device that goes into the machine itself put two fingers on either side of this flexible part here. Oh, and you can see I already primed stuff. So when you squeeze this, it kind of opens this valve and then milk will come through. So I'm going to grab a hold of it, squeeze it, and you'll see the tube fill with milk. And then I'm letting it drip, drip out of the sink, out to the sink. So now the tube is primed. I think, I'm not exactly sure if this is still the case, but I think the manual has us priming it via the pump. And when you do it via the pump, it only does little by little, like shh, 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 shh. So it does take longer. I mean, it's not forever, but when you're doing this so many times throughout the day, this is a lot faster. Um, and you can just as easily see any air bubbles and stuff like that. So after that, this goes into the pump and it, you just go about your normal feeding schedule. Um, the way we like to organize stuff is we have a refrigerator for her IV meds, but if we didn't have the refrigerator, I probably would keep her medications um, here, or if she mostly got her medications upstairs, I probably would keep them upstairs. But we use one of these bins from the, these baskets from the Dollar Tree. You could get them anywhere, really. Um, and then I always keep a thing of water here and these cups that we change out every day, the syringes, she gets several types of medications. Um, one of the things she gets is oil, boluses, that's what this is. Um, and just a little thing to mop up any spills and the marker to sometimes relabel the syringes because sometimes the print can go um, get faded. Then as far as the mixing the two fading and things, we like this scale we've used, it's a little bit messy, but we use this scale a lot and I'll link it below and 
We use one of these small containers from the Dollar Tree. I think it comes like in a pack of six or five or eight or something for a dollar. And we use these containers, which to be honest with you, we just kind of took from the hospital because we noticed that sometimes they were just throwing them in the garbage. So we would sterilize that when we come home. Or you could just use a regular bottle like this. Um, any container really that's really clean. And then um, what I do is I put it on here first before turning it on. That way when I turn it on, um, it's zeroed out with the container so it doesn't measure the weight of the container too. So this is the formula that, formula that we're currently using for her tube feeding that can change from person to person. And you know, I end up putting 38, put two of these for a big container like this. And then, and that's gonna vary per person as well. But that's what ours is. And so I can see a little bit high there. And as you get used to um, how things are going, you'll kind of get a feel for how much it is. Um, so you won't have to spend a long time at the scale. And just being approximate, um, you know, being as close as you can, I think, is all that you could ask for, really. Oh, I'm going to run out of here. So we keep the extra formula up here, and um, these you have to pitch every 30 days if you don't use them up in 30 days. When our daughter was little, um, we really had to date these. We would just take a, a permanent marker and date them because she wasn't having as much formula as she can tolerate now. But um, yeah, we definitely go through these. Um, pretty quickly now, so that's not an issue anymore. Uh, okay, and then I use the, I like these really big mouth funnels from the Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of three, and just kind of swirl it around so it doesn't get stuck in there. And we add the appropriate amount of milk, shake, 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 shake it up, and then we refrigerate it. So these are usually good for 24 hours from the time that you have made them. Um, we could do another video with programming the pump too. So um, other than that, that's just kind of the basic stuff as far as where things are in the kitchen. Right now we are headed to my daughter's room. Um, as you could probably hear, her pump is beeping, and that's because it is out of milk. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this off. We have the IV pole right next to her. When she was in a crib, we still would have the IV pole right next to her. We did find though, it was a good idea to strap it to the bed because um, as she got older or sometimes during the night, sometimes um, if somebody accidentally hits this IV pole, the whole thing could come crashing down. You don't want that. You don't, you know, you don't want the pulling at her G-tube and, you know, yanking it out. That's not a good thing. So a very simple solution for us that works for us is taking one of um, these extra straps that I had from my old purse and what I did was I put it around this clamp that I had and strapped it to the crib. You could probably use another kind of clamp um, that they have at hardware stores that I forgot what they're called it. They're called vices or something like that. But anyway, um, you can always jerry-rig something to do to keep that there. So this here is her new bag that I had just filled and I'm gonna go ahead and exchange the bags. So this is an old one. Again, we change these every 24 hours. It can crack right here. And this is gonna be interesting trying to do this one-handed. Kind of pull at that teal part a little bit and Keep that around the black wheel. 
So the end of the feeding tube has this little cap. When we take that off, what we do is we tuck it in this clamp right here. Just kind of give it a little squeeze and I'll tuck right there. That way we have it when we're priming the pump, etc. So this is the end of her tube. Right now she has a G button. Um, and then you simply clamp. It's one handed. So, um, and then you disconnect. And then you connect the new one. Make sure it's nicely firm in there. You don't have to jam it in necessarily, which you definitely do not want to do with a typical G tube because then the tube has to be replaced if it becomes too loose um, because of too much jamming it in there. This is the medication port. And then onto the machine, I turn it on. And this is going to be kind of hard to see. You won't be able to see both. Um, you can clear the totals if you wanted to. Uh, right at 73, she's on continuous feed, so that is uh, in an infinite amount as far as the dose. But I can talk about that in another time. And um, here's the button if you wanted to prime it. Um, sometimes we still do use this button. So, for example, if I happen to notice a little bit of air, but for right now we're just going to run it at 73 milliliters per hour, infinite dose, no feeding interval, and just hit to run right there. So currently what we do every evening is mix almost 24 hours worth of formula for her tube feeding at a time. Um, not quite 24 hours and definitely not over 24 hours because sometimes things can get delayed and then, you know, the formula actually ends up being a little bit older when you do use it. So it's nice to be under 24 hours if that makes any sense. So um, currently what my daughter needs is two of these bigger containers and one of the 8 ounce bottles. And I did want to say that when you mix the 8 ounce bottles, um, you may get to the point or you may be currently at the point where... Um, you're using a full bottle and if that's the case what I would do is after putting the formula in don't put the full amount of needed water in quite right at the beginning it'll be harder for the powder to dissolve so this way you have some space here so that when you mix it um, it's much easier to dissolve and then you can add the rest of the water in and then mix it as you need to. Keep in mind that everybody's um, amount of formula that they need in a certain period of time varies. Um, when you fill the bag, you know, don't fill it more than the amount needed for four hours because after four hours is when bacteria, etc., start to grow and the milk becomes bad. Um, unless you have it on an ice pack, but I wouldn't do the ice pack right away um, when they're really, really little because their little bellies might not be used to cold milk. Um, but if they are, uh, that's great because then you can actually put more milk into the bag. Also, too, the concentration can vary from person to person. So someone might have a more dilute concentration prescribed to them. Others might have a um, higher concentration just depending on what their needs are and how much that they can tolerate. So once all the formula is mixed we keep it in a section of the fridge that is allocated only towards our daughter's stuff. Um, we definitely definitely keep it away from any raw meats, um, any items that have a potential to grow a lot of mold, um, anything like vegetables, fruits, etc. I also keep her medication in here um, I like labeling specifically this bottle in which we mix her cholesterol because I don't want um, any milk to be mixed into this bottle. I want to keep this separate. That way it's less likely to grow certain types of bacteria. Styramine is a medication for, um, for her purposes is for diarrhea um, and it comes in a powder with which you mix water and it lasts for three days from the time that you mix it. 
Here is our setup where we keep our daughter's IV medication and her oral meds. I love using these Sterilite drawers. Um, I know most of you know what these are. This is where I keep some extra oral syringes, medication cups, any pill crushers, pill splitters, um, any medicines that we don't use all the time, you know, certain types of medications that may be for certain types of diaper rashes, nice dentin, that kind of thing. And then GI miscellaneous, that's where I keep some extra dressing supplies on the first floor, that way I don't have to run upstairs. If your child is on IV stuff, you'll know what these are. You know, you have usually a refrigerator that's designated towards their IV medications. And then here on the top, I keep one of um, the sheet protectors where we put her list of medications. And I keep in a sheet protector because it can get really messy here because we have to crush meds. Um, and sometimes things can squirt out. Um, so this is our current regimen. And um, I like keeping some sanitizer gel here. I keep one of these bins, which is where we keep her medicines. And then off to the right is where I have some sanitizing wipes, some tissues, and then a sharps container for the downstairs in case I have to do anything with syringes downstairs. So this looks a bit messy, but this is real life. This is what it looks like. I'm not going to try to make it super fancy. It it's just works for us. So here's where we keep a journal. We keep a diary. Um, we don't have to keep it anymore because things are thankfully pretty stable. Um, but what we used to do is document the times in which our daughter had a stool. And as you can see, you know, this is like um, eight stools a day. You could do tick marks in order to record the number of wet diapers and bowel movements. But I we have found that it's better to actually document the time because sometimes after my daughter would go, then it, we would be confused and say, did we record that? Did you do it? Did I do it? So if we record the time, then we can say, oh, okay, well, yeah, we did get that one. We did record that one. And then also we, we, we would record if she had vomited. Um, at the time, she had a G-tube to dependent drainage, so she was having her stomach drained. Um, and we would record the amount of um, output from that bag. And then in the bin, I have another one of these um, Dollar Tree containers. This is to keep some medications that we have to split. So right now she's on a seizure medicine that has to be cut in half. And this is from the Dollar Tree as well. This is a um, pill cutter. We like cutting pills in advance, some of them and then keeping them in here, that way it saves us some time. We do like Target Pharmacy for some of our typical medications, but we do have to use a special pharmacy for some compounded stuff, which are the um, Flagyl or the Rifaximin. The Imodium, we have found the cheapest price to be at Walmart, and this is to um, treat her diarrhea that's related to the tube feeding and other issues. Iron, we get that from Target. Selenium, we get from the vitamin shop, and sometimes they'll have, they will have sales, especially if you buy in bulk, then you can get free shipping. Um, Lamictal is her current seizure medication, um, and that's a pretty easy one to come by. So I'm just gonna fill the syringes. This is her nighttime regimen, and we just fill all her medications at once, and that way they are good to go. So these are her list of medicines here. Sometimes she'll have dose changes, so it's just kind of nice to remind us um, where she's at. So she has iron at three, and you make sure that you kind of turn it upside down as soon as you put the plunger in. And if there's any air there, kind of go back and forth, just push that air back out, and then get to three. And Imodium does not come with a medication stopper. So what we did is we saved medication stoppers from previous prescription bottles, and then we used that to fit in here. Um, they're different sizes though, so you just have to make sure you've got one that fits. Um, so for this, she needs eight. There's a little bit of air there, so I'm just gonna push that back into the bottle. Um, there we have eight. So she takes seizure medications. We have this pull crusher, buy that anywhere, like at um, CVS, Target, wherever. Put it in there, crush 
some medication. So I just kind of go back and forth to make sure it's really crushed. And then there might be some particles on there, so I just kind of tap it a bit. And then I put it into the cup. And there's medication left over in there that's not coming out. So I take some of the water, get just a little bit, kind of rinse that medication down. And then put it into the cup. So just kind of, I just kind of go around and swirl it around. Um, and it's not going to be 100% perfect. Um, but just do your best. So that's my fix. And um, I keep the pill crusher in a little dish here because this ends up getting rinsed out. And so I just let it dry face down. Um, and as you can see, there's air there. So we'll make sure to get that air out. Make sure not to make too much of a mess. Because we want to keep the medication in there. And I, um, uh, there's still medicine in there. I like to swirl it around a little bit. Get a little bit more water. And kind of turn the cup a little. Dry it up. Get the air out. Um, and I have to draw some water. So here we are with my daughter about to give her her nighttime medic medication. And so we pause the tube feeding. And currently this is what her setup looks like as far as the clamp goes. So I clamp this. Um, and you could unplug this. I tend to just leave it plugged and I just kind of um, hold onto the tube. Um, kind of pinch it a little bit. It's probably a bad thing to do because it makes it more likely to kink during the night. But... Do what works for you. My husband was just remarking he does things a little bit differently. So whatever works for you, as long as um, the child or the adult is getting the medication, getting the tube feeding, you're preventing infection, um, just do what works for you. You're going to find your own way of doing things. Okay, so I like to give the medicine that might have a little bit of solid or needed to dissolve first. That way I can make sure it's fully through and it's less likely to clog the tube. So I'm gonna open the port, unclamp, and I push through and I kinda do it at a bit of an angle so that um, it leaves the air at the top, any air, and then you know most of the solid is pushed through. And then I have the iron, unclamp, and push through and I forgot to mention after I did the first medicine before you would draw the syringe clamp then you can undo and then last one is the emodium unclamp and push through when you have a really little um, when you have a very young child a baby an infant Give this super, super slow at first. Um, right now we're doing it kind of quick because we know our daughter is used to it. If you end up giving it too fast, they could end up throwing it up. 